my dear sisters, you belong to a church which offers all its women priesthood power and authority from God. Nevertheless, just as he tried to do with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the Tree of Life, the adversary wants to focus our attention on what we haven't been given and blind us to all that we have been given. First of all, I'm not sure why she's bringing up Adam and Eve. What the adversary drew Adam and Eve's attention to was that they don't have knowledge. And according to Mormonism, listening to the adversary in the Garden of Eden was literally part of God's plan. But that aside, Sister Dennis, speaking specifically about priesthood power and authority, said that the adversary blinds us to what we have been given. However, I want women in and out of the church to understand what was given and later taken away. During the early years of the church, the sisters would participate in blessing meetings, where they would bless each other through the laying on of hands, and prophesy, and speak in tongues. On January 1st of 1847, Eliza R. Snow recorded that she received a blessing from two of the sisters through the gift of tongues, and that to describe the scene would be beyond my power. On February 3rd of 1854, Wilfred Woodruff and his wife Phoebe blessed their son together, who was a newly ordained priest. They laid their hands on his head and dedicated him to the Lord. And on September 7th of 1875, George Goddard recorded a similar experience, where he and his wife put their hands on his son's head and pronounced a parent's blessing upon him. On June 19th of 1849, one sister called on Zina Huntington and two other sisters to come and bless her daughter Mary Ann, who was taken very sick. Brigham Young sent his carriage to take them to her house. And after the blessing, the daughter recovered. That same year, Eliza Merrick's sister became very sick. So she blessed and anointed her, and within 24 hours, she was healed. And in the 1850s, one sister was so concerned that she was being tormented by an evil spirit that she asked Zina Huntington and Lucy Young to come over to the Lion House to wash and anoint her to protect her from the evil spirit. Another instance was recorded when Zina Huntington was called upon to watch over the body of her deceased neighbor. While there, she gave the man a priesthood blessing and he was momentarily raised from the dead. Empress Cindy Huntington, after she became a wife of Heber C. Kimball, dedicated her own house to the Lord because her husband couldn't be bothered to do it. And in March of 1849, Presentia Huntington gave a man named Joseph Hovey a blessing. And in the blessing, she promised him exaltation. Women could sometimes preside over the washing and anointings of men. One instance was recorded on November 8th of 1882, when Presentia presided over the washing and anointing of Bishop Bringhurst. So basically for the first 100 years of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, women could use the priesthood. So Sister Dennis, help me understand. Is it the influence of the adversary to cry for justice? Does the adversary influence us to cry for equality? Weren't those the very things Jesus Christ died for? In all my research, it hasn't been the adversary that has blinded women to what they have been given. It's the church.